20th of May, I'm doing some fruit thinning, but this time I'm going to do it in a scientific way, do experimental. This is a little tag, and this is a tree of sunset. I've chosen this particular branch here to leave, and I'm not going to do any fruit thinning on this. I'm going to thin the fruit on the rest of the tree, but this section here, I'm not going to thin. And just so that you can remember, when I return to this in the um, autumn, hopefully. I'm just putting this label on. It hasn't got anything on it, but it's just a label so that you can see, okay, so that we'll know which, the, from, from here downwards, this branch, which is representative of the rest of the tree, I'm not going to thin it. Now let me show you what I'm going to do on the rest of the tree. If you just have a look at this um, one down here, this, uh, this is a section about a yard long. How many fruits have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We've got about 30 fruits here. About 30 fruits in, on one yard. How many do you think there should be, Julia? 30. Oh, no more about than about 10, yeah. Okay, well now what I'm going to do, first of all, remove any which obviously are diseased. And at the moment we might be looking for chafer damage or sawfly damage. Uh, Fruits which are growing underneath are often less favoured. So we'll take those out, I'll take that one right out. Where there, there's two fruits growing together, usually take one of them out. And obviously anything that looks deformed will reject. Growing underneath is never quite so good. Take that one out. So we've got now left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take that one out there. Right, is that about right? I think that's about right um, because sunset doesn't make a very big apple. If we yes. were talking about Lord Lambourne, that might be too many because they'd get very big and full of juice. So I've left about, about 10 to a yard and I'll, I'll just carry on. I'm not going to continue filming this uh, at length because, uh, um, uh, you know, it's not uh, it's, it's Would you like to show us when you take out whole spurs? Sometimes you cut off a whole clump of spurs like Do in the middle there. I mean, like, for example, that one, it's growing underneath. I'll just oh, take that out. And again, the reasons for doing this, if anyone has just joined us and hasn't seen me on this subject before, uh, it is to increase the fruit size, it is to reduce the stress on the tree because the pips actually take much more energy to produce uh, than the flesh of the apple, uh, and it's to avoid the branches being broken by excessive weight of fruit. Uh, but with this particular variety, Sunset, uh, it has a strong tendency to produce very large numbers of fruit, which is great. It blossoms every year and it's a very attractive tree to grow in your garden. I'm always being asked um, you know, about growing apples in pots. My answer is I, I, I'd suggest that you don't, but if you are going to grow an apple in a pot, get the biggest pot you can and the smallest apple that you can. And Sunset is quite a good choice uh, because it always blossoms every year. Very attractive apple, very fertile apple, and it has a naturally very small size. So if you must grow a tree in a pot, Sunset is um, uh, one of the better choices, um, but I still wouldn't do it. Uh, it's a great tree for a small garden. Anyhow, I'm, I'm going to return to this particular tree. I'm going to thin the rest of the tree, but where this um, label is, uh, I'm going to leave these trees, leave the, these apples at their natural um, uh, thickness, density, <laughs> and I'm not going to do anything there. We'll come back in the autumn and see how it does.